So, good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Sanchez, and I'm a senior at Falkwa High School. My company is called Fuel Mesa. It was formed on January 6th of this year. The idea came up from a conversation I was having with my dad. We were talking about a table we made for our living room. And I'll show you a picture. I'll show you what it looks like right now. How do I turn this video camera around? Uh, oops. Well, I guess I'll just turn around here. But this is one of the tables we made for our living room. It'll hold our TV up right here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Sorry, Chris, I was Yes, we can see it. Okay. I don't know how to switch my thing around, my camera. It doesn't. But anyways, on. And from there, we just surfed the internet looking at tables, and we came across the Epoxy River table, and that's where, that's where we're going to start from there. And uh, the name of – the name Theo Mesa actually comes – is actually two words combined into one. Um, the first half of it is Fiume, which is F-I-U-M-E which means river in Italian. And the other half of the word is mesa, M-E-S-A, which is table in Spanish. And I thought it was pretty unique, a river table, both combined. Um, and yeah, and here I have a small prototype that I made as an experiment, which turned out pretty well. But it's just something smart, small made. And the epoxy is in the middle. And I put some seashells in between to make it look sort of like a river. You can see that. We can see it. Hmm. Yeah. And that's it so far. Hmm. All right, Tim, go ahead with questions. So, what made you choose just to do tables? I understand you started out with making one for your house, but why is your product centered around just the table? Why is it centered around just the table? Yeah. Um, because it's something we know how to do here, We're just making tables. We made tables before, so I figured since we could use that experience we have just to try this out. Okay, and when you use the epoxy resin, um, would you use it on other products? Mm -hmm. Yes. What other products would you add to your portfolio? What other products should you use it for? You can mm -hmm. do anything. You could do art. If you have little uh, silicone molds, you can make little coasters or even necklaces and all that. You can do a wide variety of stuff with the epoxy resin. All right. Thank you. Just curious as to um, how are you going to market and get people to know about yours? I mean, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos with people doing those types of table, which is actually kind of neat. So how are you get let people know about the product and get them interested in buying it specifically from you? So during, I would like to do that during the trade show too, but also advertise on social media or just word to mouth, um, letting people know. Publicly and all that. Also, go and try just go around farmers markets too. It might not be a specific market like that, but just talk to people around there and let them know about what I do. And you said this is something that you and your dad do together. Um, is that how you want to continue to do the business? Is the partnership with him, or is it something that you're going to branch off and try to do more of it later? Well, yeah, that's what we want to do together right now, but um, we, we're doing something else currently, which is some another project we have, um, but yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, this is Robbie. Um, I, I will actually look up some information uh, about these tables uh, because I'd never really heard about it before and super cool. So I'm, I'm excited that you're doing something like this. Um, 
So I had a couple of questions just from the mechanics of it. Uh, you mentioned in your business plan about wood movement. And so I'm just from an engineering standpoint, I'm going to guess that's got to do with the coefficient of thermal expansion differences between epoxy and wood. Um, is that why we don't hear about that kind of happening in traditional wood tables, but it would happen in, in your type of table? Is, is that right? Um, yes, sir. So what, what do you do about that kind of post sale? So you sell me a table, it's a thousand bucks. My family and I enjoy it. And then, you know, winter comes and, and I've got some, is it cracking? You know, what, what happens and how do you, how do you take care of it post sale from a business plan standpoint? Or how are you advising someone else to take care of it post sale? Um, I think you could, you could put a layer of the epoxy on top of it, like a seal coat, you know? And I think that would hold it in place. As for moving. Okay. Um, is your plan to prefab, uh, let's say end tables, let's just say that, um, of a certain size, so like uh, you've got 10 of them for sale or 50 of them for sale or whatever, or are you planning on custom building every single table? Yes, sir. That's what, I, that's what I plan on trying to do, custom build the tables for people. So they just give me a size of what they would want, and from there I would make it. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a that's a good kind of uh, strategy to know your uh, market and what people are actually wanting. But, you know, from a profitability standpoint, especially as quick as you guys want to grow, and I'll tell you, I'm impressed with your projections. You go out there and hustle that much, you know, first year, like, wow, that's super impressive. So I like that. I just think in order to scale, like, I think you're probably wanting to scale. Um, I think you're going to have to go, you know, the custom jobs are twice as much as a mass produced uh, table. And, you, you know, you knock those out over and over and over again. Um, so just, just a thought there. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So I looked at the competitor you referenced in your, uh, business plan, the uh, CBCS, um, and so they, they're impressive, but what do you think it would take for you to compete? What do you think it would take for you to get to their level um, with with your business? Um, definitely get more workers um, to help me out make more tables for sure. Um, advertising too, I think. Just get let the get involved in the community too. Getting involved in the community. And that's what I think. Yeah, I think what they've um, done, you know, from Ohio is become, you know, kind of maximize the search engine operation um, to be one of the first places that you come to when you look for those type of tables, um, and so. You know, can you compete nationwide with them right now? Probably not, but uh, as you mentioned, getting out in the community and making sure that your name's known there, and uh, I think that's a good strategy. So uh, one of the things I want you to consider, okay. this will be the last comment I got, is um, people naturally that are around rivers and lakes um, are going to be, I think, the uh, first potential clients for you there. And so, you know, you've got the Tennessee River there, and uh, Decatur, maybe marketing uh, to those businesses along the riverfront or something like that is a unique uh, space in, in their business. I know, you know, Magnolia River may be a good option for you too, since we've already got that river thing going. But just think about from a marketing and, and sales strategy standpoint, targeting those people um, versus, you know, somebody living on a farm probably. Uh, it doesn't have as much want for a, a lake or river type of a table there. So, again, I think the product's awesome, and I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Okay, most definitely. Thank you. I agree. It's a neat concept, and I've seen people use it. I've never seen, you know, several videos of people doing it. So, great concept, and uh, good luck with it. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, good luck and great job. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. 
Chris, thank you so much. Do you have any questions for them? Uh, no, ma'am. I don't.